In the past, we've shown we'll go through virtually anything to make our RV feel like a home. We put a couch through our window, we added solar on the roof with some lithium batteries, and we painted everything white in our RV. Today we're not getting quite as extreme, but instead we're gonna show you some <laughs> DIY hacks that you can use to make everyday living in your RV feel like home. Now DIY in this case, this actually stands for do it in a year, I think for Nathan. So <laughs> we had this in our Airstream and we've wanted this in our fifth wheel and I've just, I have tried to get this installed. I'll explain all the problems I've had along the way. I didn't realize I was like quite a water snob. I can taste a huge difference in water. And that was something I didn't know until we started traveling. And I realized I wasn't drinking enough water because I didn't like the taste of it. And every time you go to a new campground, a new city, a new state, the water is going to taste significantly different. And I wanted a water filter or some way to purify water so we had clean drinking water that actually tastes good. And so Nathan did a ton of research and something that was important to him because Nathan is not a water snob. He says he can't taste a difference in water. But he's like, I want something that saves space, that isn't going to sit on the counter and take a ton of counter space. I want something small, compact, that is just easy to use. So that is where this comes in. So let me show you something outside first before we, while we're talking about water, this is more, um, the taste does matter, but this, I, I don't know what it is with the water here or where we are with our home base in Tennessee. Let me show you something. So this is our outdoor spigot here at the site. I've talked to the water department. They said, oh, it's not a big deal. It's just clay. <laughs> Look at, Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Look at the water that's coming that's coming out of our spigot here. So like first of all, I cannot believe that's normal. I've I've <laughs> <laughs> this looks like fruit tea <laughs> with a lot of sediment so, on the bottom. Um maybe I'm not a water snob. <laughs> You're being a water snob, Marissa. I don't want to hear it. This is perfectly normal. Yeah, that's what the water company tells us. <laughs> but I've swapped this out twice. I have no clue if that's rust or clay or what's going on. I have a replacement spigot over here that includes no bronze or something. I don't pay like three times as much for this thing. I haven't installed it yet. That's also in the DIY I do it in a year list. You might be wondering, you've been drinking that? So our Solitude has a built-in water filtration system for the whole RV, which is this bad boy right here. So every one to two weeks, when I can tell the water when water filtration system is starting to clog up, I go, and these are like, I don't know, six bucks a piece, eight bucks a piece. So this kind of adds up over time. But while we're here in Tennessee, I've been coming out here and replacing this. I don't know, the water does not look like that when we get it in our sink, but still, <laughs> not good. So if you have suggestions, let us know. My plan is to swap. I'm hoping it's something to do with this spigot because Marissa's mom is also in the same water system and she says she never sees the water look like that. So the issue with the water filter is not really the water filter itself. It's what you encounter a lot when it comes to doing these projects where you want an RV to feel like a home while well, you're getting something residential and you're trying to install it into something that's not residential. So we've talked about our lights. These are residential lights. But in order for these residential lights to work, we had to get these super expensive 12 volt bulbs. It's just like you're always having to kind of hack things in an RV. <laughs> like Basically, there's all kinds of conversions going on all over this thing. So I thought I had everything I needed to do the install today, and I realized yesterday, oh my goodness, I don't have this conversion from the weird metric spigot to go to a one quarter, which is what I need to go into the water filter, which then ties into the main water line. So I'm gonna have a three eighth hose come out of there. It's gonna tie into the one quarter hose, tie into the one quarter hose here. It's gonna go through the water filter, and then we have to, I have to put a split over here on the main line. Here's the Acuva down here. So you could, there's just all kinds of conversions going on. All that to say, if you have to buy a residential secondary spigot and it has a funky conversion, the two main things that I had to get to make this work are number one, on the main water line, I had this piece, which takes the half inch, continues on to half inch, but then gives you the option to shoot off to the one quarter to go to the water filter over here. The second thing I'm gonna buy and then swap this out with is this adapter from the spigot to a one quarter. So this is nothing as Acuva. This is just a, this is one of those typical like RV residential conversion issues you run into when you have an RV. But we're gonna DIY this thing. I'm hoping to get this done today. I'm gonna continue on with some other projects too, but it's on the list. Cause um, 
This is not good. We love our couches. We have two of these. Part of the issue is the, the standard feet that come with these is like a piece of plastic. And so these are like sliding all over the place. Now this back couch, um, I've kind of like screwed it in with the floor and it's working okay. But I thought, man, there's gotta be an easier way to do this without <laughs> having to like screw the couch into the floor. And so we're hoping to solve two problems with one stone. Is that the right word with this issue? Mm -hmm. So we love the couches, but also we do love to work out. And so mm -hmm. what we run into and what you may run into if you get into an RV is that yes, we can keep the workout equipment outside, but we found out if we don't have the workout equipment close to us, where we want it, when we want it, we <laughs> just don't use it. We work outside as, as much as we can, but there are some days, I mean, traveling, it's just, cold outside and we want to be inside or maybe you're at a really tight spot and you like to work out inside so everyone doesn't see you working out outside we love these dumbbells we've actually traveled with power blocks for years because it's an adjustable dumbbell so nathan and i obviously work out on different weights i lift much heavier than he does so i need whatever <laughs> <laughs> and so it goes from what 50 is what it I was 50. I think I work out with the 50 and, and Nathan works out with the 10 and then this can even pop out and go even lighter down to five So this would be five and then you've got like your two and a half that you so can sometimes you have to just use when Nathan too. really wants to those, work yeah. his arm so <laughs> Two issues really number one. We had to find a weight and that's why we love this that's short enough that it goes underneath the couch and secondly we found out even though the measurements online said this was short enough, it was actually not short enough because most people don't have the same problems RVers do when it comes to fitting things in small places. So you will read measurements, you'll pay for the product, which is super heavy. And you're like, it doesn't fit like it's supposed to. And then what are you supposed to do? So I put on these rubber feet right here and I ordered like a whole pack for 10 bucks. I'll link to it and replace the plastic foot that was under with this rubber foot. And so it raised the couch, I don't know, like not even half an inch. It did not need much to come up high enough to lift, to put the weight under it. So that's that's like two birds with one stone. We've got our weight that we can keep inside when it gets cold, we don't wanna work outside. We get it stored here, we can whip it out if we need to, and the couch stays in place better with the rubber feet. I'd say that, pretty good, that's a win. Now another hack for this to feel like a home, and this is actually another two for three for whatever you wanna call it. So, and this, I get it, like this was not as big a deal for Marissa, it was a big deal for me. He's like, can I put speakers on? No. Hide it, hide it, and I'm fine with it. <laughs> so that was her criteria. So three things that we really wanted, that we enjoy, that make this feel like our space. Um, I don't know, there's something about, and we get up every morning, I do it, I actually have a command now, I'm not gonna say, hey, G-O-O-G-L-E, because it might set your stuff off. But at night, I'll say that, and then I'll say uh, bedtime, and it starts playing, it plays hammer time, is what it plays right now. But it's like a song, and the kids start getting ready for bed. In the morning, I say good morning, and it says like, um, you know, it'll say good morning, here's the weather for the day, here's your events, something about that, we just like it. And then the kids will say, they'll ask for animal noises. We don't have a lot of flat space. But we already have this space up here, um, and this is all, to do stuff we're working on, but, but we already had this space up here. And yes, the RV comes with speakers, which they were back here. This was a speaker here and this is a speaker here. And honestly, that's the norm for most RVs. They have the speakers that are pointing down. So I thought, I want speakers to go out. So we want better sound and we want something that incorporates Google or Alexa or whatever so that we can do that. And this was our solution. It was not a cheap solution, but it kind of did two birds with one stone, and so we did it. And so this is a Sonos soundbar. I'll put a link. I can't remember the exact model or whatever. Nathan was so excited about this. You know, if you're having a movie night, you want to sit on this couch because this is where, like, you get the rumble. And what she means by rumble, um, so we could have just stopped at the soundbar, but who wants to do that, right? <laughs> so, we um, wanted a movie theater experience <laughs> when we had um, family movie night in here. So. so I was like, we don't watch TV a lot of movies a lot when we watch it i want to do it right <laughs> the hack i found i'll try to list these speakers these are actually ikea sonos speakers so it has to be sonos to tie in with the system so i have two of these underneath here the other speaker which is hard to see it's farther back in there but that is the subwoofer so basically there, there's a there's a video and i'll link to it but there's a video that shows how to take an Ikea speaker, which is way cheaper than a dedicated Sonos subwoofer. The Sonos subwoofer is like a lot of money. So it's way cheaper to buy the Ikea speaker and then make it a subwoofer. And then I've got this second speaker that kind of a little bit of surround sound to put you know, some sound out and stuff too. But So one of the things we love and Grand Design listens, we gave them some feedback and I was like, hey, can we add this Televator? So now they've started adding this into their solitudes, which is really cool because we get the window, but when we want to bring the TV up, they have put it in a televator, which we 
absolutely love because like Nathan mentioned, we don't watch movies or do TV a ton, but when you do, you wanna you wanna do it right. What is that, a quarter inch? Maybe a gap, but it doesn't matter. All we need and is And I'm gap. happy with it because it's out of the way. I it didn't, looks good. It yeah, looks it looks really good. And if we're getting geeky while we're at it, um, I've got an NVIDIA shield down here that we use. Man, that's dusty. Uh, but we use that with <laughs> a hard drive. Who doesn't clean under their TV? <laughs> so we've got this because sometimes we don't have internet and that's a little bit of entertainment if we need it with the NVIDIA shield. It's just a fancy Roku. It's almost like a mini computer. So this is actually a Roku TV, but when you turn it on, it automatically connects up with the shield and then like we're good to go. We can start navigating through stuff or whatever. Sets. There's the night. City, now prepare to die. There were just hundreds of snakes in this temple just waiting for us. Can you feel it? Is it rumbling? It what? is. Wait for it. Delete. Delete. I feel like I'm in a theater right now, Nathan. <laughs> So this is cool. It's it's DIY. It's a little bit of a home kind of touch to it. And then we can talk to it. And I can say, hey, Joe, GLE. Um. Okay, the Spotify playlist called Folk Mix. Here you go. Our kids love this. They love being able to talk to it and have it play music and they'll dance around. It's just a really nice touch to make this feel like a home. So this is a super simple hack that I'm doing to distract myself from having to finish the faucet. Um, <laughs> one of our principles of living small, organization, the whole thing, I'm in the kids mid bunk right now and it's, it's protect the flats, one of the things we say. So anytime you get something on the wall in an RV, it's going to help protect the flat because there's not a lot of flat space in an RV. I got these on Amazon. I'm gonna have two of these. I've got one already put in here, but I'm gonna have two of these set up here for the kids. Hensley's got paper that has not been used yet versus paper that has creations on it. So I'm gonna separate these two. But I, in my office slash bedroom slash laundry room, I've got two more of these that are that I use to separate my documents and things like that next to my desk where I work at. So tons of uses for these. They're really simple to put up and they really help with the space. Okay, so Nathan showed one of his favorite RV hacks and I'm gonna share one of mine. What I'm about to show you is not just an RV hack, it is a life hack. No matter if you're in a house or an RV, this has changed my life. Making the bed has always been like this huge nuisance of mine. I do not enjoy making the bed, especially in an RV because usually you're tucked in. You don't have a lot of room on the sides. Some you have no room. You're all the way up on the sides, especially with kids. Like making beds has been like this, this dread of mine. So we absolutely love this bedding called Betty's. Betty's is zip up bedding. So as you can tell, it like looks super neat and tucked in. So there is a zipper that's how you make your bed. You zip it. I literally make my bed in the bed in the morning. I zip up Nathan's side, I roll over, I zip up my side, throw the pillows up there, and the bed is made. If you're worried, like, does the fabric, like, not cover me because it zips, it's got this extra layer that just kind of tucks in when you zip it up. So you always feel like you're covered up. If you want to wash it, this zips into two pieces. So it zips all the way off. So you've got like your flat sheet and then you've got your top sheet. I love the Minky. It's super soft. You can also get it just fabric without it. So something that we have never done on YouTube before, um, but Betty's has offered our Let's Jump More Journey followers a 25% off for the 28th and 29th of August which is today and then ends at midnight tomorrow. And we have never gotten that coupon code for our followers for YouTube. So I am so excited because this is significant and they don't offer that 25% off very often. So if you're interested in this life hack and getting that 25% off, you can head to Betty's. We'll put the link below and use the code LJMJ for 25% off. Life hack. I love this. I love this so easy. So I don't know if you've ever had this scenario happen before with RV living, but I know I have. You got the oven going uh, and then all of a sudden you look down and the propane oven is dead. It's not doing anything. Well, because you ran out of propane and maybe you had another propane tank or maybe that's all your propane, in which case I guess we're eating out. Uh, or you're taking a shower, or your wife's taking a shower, and propane had died, you didn't know it. 
There's no heat to the tank. There's no heat to the water. She hops in and she is not happy. We've had all that happen to us in RV life before, but I wanna show you guys a little hack or a little tool that Lippert sent me that I think could be a really cool solution to these problems. So Lippert has sent us two of their LP tank sensors to test out. Now we have never had a tank sensor on any RV other than our Airstream. It was always nice on the Airstream and it would be nice to have on the fifth wheel as far as like a hack and to make living easier is that everything ties into their one control app. So if you have an RV with one control, which is a ton of RVs at this point, uh, this ties into that system. And then you can open up the app at any point once I have this installed and you can check your LP levels within the app. All right, let's see what this comes with. There's the sensor itself. Hmm. And then here's the instructions. Looks like we have magnets on the back of it that are going to connect to the bottom of the propane tank. I'm going to turn on the sensor, connect it to the One Control app, pair it, install these things, it looks like, on the bottom. Put a piece size amount of sonic grease, which looks like is inside of this. Center this on the bottom of the tank then flip the tank over and wait at least five minutes. So let's see what we got. Pressed it five times, opened the Lippert app, liquid propane sensor. Okay, we got it paired, just asking for the tank size, 30 pound vertical. Tank number one, took like three minutes. <laughs> so I know one of these tanks is totally empty and the other one, I'll pick it up and fill it out. I'm gonna guess this one is half to two thirds. I'll get the other installed done on this one. Put both tanks back the way they're supposed to be. It said to wait five minutes. I'll wait five or 10 minutes and then we'll, uh, I don't know, see what the sensors do. Okay, so results are in on the tanks. Got them built into this app. That's what's cool about the One Control, along with the leveling and the awning and the lights, and so many things are starting to be built into one system in one place, which is really cool. So I love that. I love that it's in the app. I don't have to worry about a physical button or being in one place. I can just whip up my phone at any time, any time that I'm within range of the One Control app. Probably even driving on the road if I needed to, and I can see the levels of the tanks. It's showing that the one I'm pretty sure is close to empty, or possibly empty, is at 20%, and then it's showing the second tank, which I was, I said it was like 50, to percent to two thirds says sixty five percent. So I think, I think for what it is, I don't know if you ever had like um, if you ever had monitors on any sort of tanks in an RV with a gray tank or black tank. I did not expect one hundred percent accuracy with this, but it's enough to me on the first one that I know is really close to empty or totally empty. Um, it even had like a little alert come up on the app. You'll see there's like a little um, like a little exclamation point saying, <laughs> you know, hey, heads up, this tank it's it's getting low or it's about gone. If you have the One Control app open and you have notifications turned on you'll get a notification come up on your phone telling you when these tanks are low as a heads up. I like it. I think it's a keeper. Okay, I've put it off long enough. It's time for me to tackle this faucet again. Today's the day, because we've, we've got to do something about this. I think it has settled. My <laughs> drink, please. You want this drink? Mm -mm. Um, uh, uh, uh. Chocolate shake. <laughs> what about that drink? My chocolate shake. <laughs> My chocolate shake. You don't want this drink? Mm, I want chocolate shake. <laughs> so here is where we're at as far as what I have installed. Here's the Acuva down here. So this is kind of the thing and this was our thinking on what how we were initially going to install this so initially my plan was we wanted this clean we didn't want the second faucet we wanted all the water coming through this main one to be ultra filtered because when we say filtered i'm not just talking about this filter doesn't just take care of taste because it will it takes care of bacteria i mean to the point that like if we needed to we could honestly drink out of our water tank we can drink water in other countries like it totally kills everything it's not just about taste problem is when you use this large faucet the water flow is so fast, the Acuva can't kill the bacteria in time. It'll still filter it, it'll still make it taste better, but it's not actually killing everything. So that water flow has to be slowed down using this. But the problem is, once you slow the flow down, then your main faucet 
like the, it's not enough water flow for washing dishes and things like that. So really, you're probably gonna need the second faucet. Here's where we are on the install. Of course, this is the filter. The thing is you have to lower the flow of water before it comes in the filter, but we wanted our main source of water to stay the same flow rate. So over here is the magical piece, this adapter that splits it, takes it to a quarter inch, it goes through the filter, pre-filter, through the Acuva filter, and then shoots out to the water spigot. That doesn't make sense, actually. <laughs> Because wouldn't we need to slow down the water before it gets to the filter? Oh man, I think this is supposed to go here. Let me look at the diagram again. <laughs> we'll get, I'll get back to you. Nothing puts Nathan more in a mood than doing- He's so mad. <laughs> There's a special place in the afterlife where they're gonna make people be tying kids' toddler shoes and putting them on, and they're gonna be making them do plumbing in an RV. Plumbing is horrible enough, Plumbing in an RV, like I can't even reach 75% of this. I'm just like blindly holding my hand in here doing this. I can't, I can't see it. Let me check this diagram. I'm pretty sure I got this wrong. Putting on toddler shoes is not that bad. It is horrible. It's not that bad. It's horrible. Listen, we need this water filter. Um. No, it slows it down after. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Are you filming me? <laughs> well. It's real life, Nathan. Okay, I double check the manual. I do have it right. Oh, here, here's the picture on the manual. So this one kills up to 99.9999% of bacteria and viruses. <laughs> but to do that, it has to slow down the water flow. And so my assumption was you want to slow down the water flow before it even makes it to the filter. But apparently, I don't understand water that well. Maybe it, apparently it doesn't matter. They want the water flow to actually slow down before it gets to the faucet. And you can use a normal faucet with this. You don't have to do a secondary faucet, but if you only go to one faucet, you're gonna have a flow restrictor on it and it's gonna just, let me show you the difference. So this is a normal faucet. This is why we split this. This is a normal faucet flow. And then here's the new one that's coming out. This is the, this is the flow of the new one. Because <laughs> it has the restrictor on it. <laughs> Which you know, it's fine. That's. I want it to kill bacteria. That's the whole point. I don't want it to just taste good, which Marissa doesn't. You want it to taste good too, I guess. We just we just don't want it to be. <laughs> we don't want it to be like this. The color of my dress. <laughs> which it already wasn't. You know, I was already using the whole house pre-filter. So now we have a whole house pre-filter, and then it's coming through the pre-filter for the Acuva, and then it's slowed down enough that when it comes through the Acuva, it will also kill bacteria. All right, so drum roll. We're gonna try this out. It's gonna be worth the wait. <laughs> ah. That's what people do, right? <laughs> do you waft it? Waft it? I don't even know what that word means. How do you even know what that means? You don't know what waft no, is? No, I don't. Oh, wow. You never took science class, did you? <laughs> I'm curious how many people know what wafting means. All right, comment below. Do you know the word waft? Or is Nathan the only one? Well, half the time when you say things, it's not how This is a waft. Anything. Like. Okay, you're not just mispronouncing waft or. No, it's a waft. Like you okay. get a little, like a little smell. Like okay. a. That's good water. That's um, for you. Really got into the drink it? Oh. I'm not drinking that. You can see everything settled on the bottom there. <laughs> I don't think there's much question on what's going on here. So, <laughs> so if you would like to see these RV hacks in person and you would like to come hang out with us, our rig and us and the Team Journey LJMJ community will be at our first ever event in November, close to Orlando. We have just a few spots left. These are gonna be gone soon, but you go to teamjourneyhuddle.com. We would love to connect with you there. Other journeyers that are already coming to the event would love to connect with you there. Grab a ticket, we cannot wait to see you in November. Well, that is our journey for today. Until next video, we'll catch you guys later.